the, a date which will live in infamy. Okay. Anybody know? Anybody know? December 7th, 1941. We didn't even know each other. When the Japanese bombed Pearl Harbor. That's a telegram from 1942. Oh, this is um when they went in to rescue the Jewish people that were in the concentration camps in Europe after the United States went into World War II. So what I did was I dug in, took a sea ration can, put the can on there, lit the kale, and uh, and Ooh, I this is neat. And, and I had this my is, it has a thing for the Shabbat and services. Is, uh, uh, you know, Friday in a There's a talent which I talked what about earlier. Who told me she was going back to yes, Germany because she loved Hitler? Uh, I think really I think it's their to dish, the dish they use for seders. I don't know. Um, I'm trying to think what it is because oh yeah, it is a seder plate. I just looked at it. Um. There's a helmet of of, of Rabbi Shubo. I hope I pronounced that right. If I didn't, I apologize. And then this I want to point out because this is so amazing. This wedding gown. Reason why I want to point this out is a lot of these wedding gowns during the World War II era were made from either rather cheap fabric due to rations or parachute silk. I actually have a friend, she just passed away and and she had hers made out of parachute silk. So I wanted to point that out because I love that. So this was 1880 to 1945. Okay, next floor. I'm gonna start this way. Your land, my land. I love that. That's pretty cool how they did it in the mirrors. Oh, that's a Jonathan Horowitz who did it. It's a screen print and it's on mirrors. That's cool. New voices. American Jewish community changed dramatically during the second half of the 20th century. New Jewish immigrants continued to arrive in the United States. Holocaust survivors from survivors, Jews from Cuba, Iran, South Africa, and the former Soviet Union, among many others. Then some of these I actually recognize, I think. Oh, Barbara Streisand. I recognize her. Love Barbara Streisand. Carol King. Another good one. Oh, this is this is cool. Harvey Milk. And of course, Barbara Walters, God rest her soul. Henry Kissinger. And this I want to. This is what I show because she's one of my favorite authors when I was growing up. Judy Bloom. Nice. Andy Kaufman. Gilda. Love Gilda.
Lou Reed. For those of you that don't really know much about classic rock, that song, Walk on the Wild Side, he did it. Rabbi Lewis Paris. Ooh, Bob Dylan. Donna Caron or Karen? I think it's Karen. Ooh, this one's cool. Judith Resnick. She was on the Space Shuttle Challenger when it exploded in 1986. That was also the one where they were going to have the first teacher in space, Krista McAuliffe, for those of you that don't know. And this is, we are up to 1945 to now. The only life I can love or hate is the life that we have found here. This American life of the 20th century, the life of Americans who are also Jews, Sal Bellow, 1976. So it's about the American Jewish migration, the infamous flight to the suburbs. So like New Jersey, LA, the Katz family of Germany coming to America. That looks almost like a Levittown section. Jewish immigration to America and Israel after World War II. And if you notice, they are coming from all over the world, which awesome. And they are settling more in more cities. So you got your East Coast cities, then they go into Detroit, Chicago, Dallas, Houston, Atlanta, then go west, young man. The ones going into Miami. So, yeah. I think um, Neil Diamond had that song about coming to America. There you go, kids. Exodus 1947. This is, it left France carrying more than 4,500 Jewish refugees and Holocaust survivors. Then this is about a, the Jewish state, Israel. It declared its independence May 14th, 1948. Our next task consists of bringing all the Jews to Israel. David Ben Guron, I'm sorry if I mispronounced that, Prime Minister of Israel, 1950. I'm going to step back because this is beautiful. Two American, two American Jews, America is home. Response of Jacob Blastein, president of the American Jewish Committee. Of course, Israel was very much disputed. It still is in a way. There are some that won't really acknowledge certain things with Israel, unfortunately, but I just wanted to point that out. This is so gorgeous. I love that. That is the proclamation of the establishment of the state of Israel. Stamp booklet. And that is... Oh, yeah. Found at 1917, Zionists and Hebrews. Histra Ivra uh, of America encouraged... American Jews to learn and use Hebrew and print it, publish Hebrew books and periodicals. Commemorative bowl. Making cultural connections. 
So this is the Cold War at home, which Jews often felt pressure to re-emphasize their loyalty to America and underscore their commitment to freedom and democracy. Now, this basically, you know, McCartney's Red Scare. So, that's what they mean by that. The Rosenbergs, which I think we have all heard about that one. Although this one is interesting. This is Parents to Die on Wedding Anniversary. I did not know the Rosenbergs were scheduled for execution on their wedding anniversary. And I'm a history freak, so I love this stuff, too, because of the history. <laughs> okay. The reason why I'm laughing is because this is about the flight to the suburbs. Now, the reason why I'm laughing is right here. It says, how many Levin towns were built, planned and built by Levin and Sons? The answer will shock you. Four. How many are in the greater Philadelphia area? So far I know of two. Willingboro, New Jersey, which was called Levittown, New Jersey, and Levittown, Pennsylvania. This is their, for their diff, the different colleges and whatnot. Like, this is a diploma from Hardwood College. This is about, you know, GI Bill, basically. University of Mac. Diploma from Marilyn Sam Samble in Newark, from Newark Beth Israel Hospital School of Nursing. The fraternity paddle for Sigma Alpha Mu. Now, for those of you that don't know anything about universities, like fraternities and sororities have these uh, paddles that they do for initiation. I forgot what the whole thing was. I have friends in Alpha Phi Omega that mentioned about it to me. Ooh, look. Now, that's a grill from back, way back when. Let's see, can I get into it? Oh my gosh. When you open it, somebody's home movies. That is so cool. And this is an old school grill. I love it. Jewish cookbooks, which I like because I like looking at old cookbooks. Kind of reminds me of my grandma, my Irish Catholic grandma. So 1950, 150 million population in the United States. 4.8 million Jewish population. 6 million is the number of TV sets that were in American homes. Because keep in mind, 1940s, 1950s was when television came about. Oh gosh, there's like Jafilta fish recipe there. So if you ever come here and you want a Jafilta fish recipe, there you go. I like that. And you got the big chill refrigerator which that is so cool this is an example of what what a kitchen would look like in the 1950s I think that's matzah that box Oh wow, I love how they have like these old home movies. It's so cool. This is Jewish education, American classrooms. Is Hebrew school something new? Now for those of you that don't know anything with Hebrew school, it's kind of a thing with the Jewish people where they learn about Hebrew and their culture. And 
Since the 1950s, many children have been learning about Jewish traditions at Hebrew school and going to Christian community centers to spend more time with other families, just like today. What I always describe it as, it's kind of like, to me it's almost like, like how the Catholics have CCD. I could be wrong. And if I'm wrong, I apologize. And they did have summer camps. What year did the first American Jewish summer camps for kids open? 1902, and it's still running in Cold Spring, New York. Oh, I love that. This is so gorgeous with these. Little dog house, little Adirondack chairs. This is an example of a letter from camp. Hey. I don't know what it is, but I love this. It's so cool. <sighs> Necessary articles. All the different Jewish camp, summer camps which it has a little bit about each one. It is so cool. But look at this. Oh, it's so beautiful. I love these. Bar and Bat Mitzvah. Bat Mitzvah, I mean Bar Mitzvah, takes place when a boy turns 13 and is called to read the Torah for the first time. The ceremony signifies that a boy has achieved adulthood in the eyes of the community is now responsible for observing Jewish law. Which, I have seen this in movies and the way they do it is beautiful. And then following World War II, bat mitzvah became increasingly common to further expand women's participation in Jewish religious life. So basically it's the bat mitzvahs for the girl, the bar mitzvahs for the boy. What's this? It's like a Oh, this is this is the marriage one. I was wondering what the heck was with this veil, because I, I went from the bar mitzvah side to this, and I was like, I don't remember ever hearing about that at a bat mitzvah. Hanukkah and Passover. Personalizing observances, which is very common. And then, Protestant Catholic Jew, America's triple melting pot of religions. Interesting thing, a lot of Jewish people in the later part of the 20th century, they ended up marrying into Christianity. And it's the center of our religion, and so from the exterior and interior, the center column comes up as a dome space, and it's lit with two shafts of light. It says that in the park in the desert, you have two cherub and two gold angels that guard the sacred contents of the ark. It's a temple Israel of greater Miami groups of stained glass. Oh God, that's so gorgeous. The suburban synagogue. <laughs> this is uh, the Beth Shalom Synagogue in Elkins Park, which is just outside of Philly. I want to 
I want to show you guys this because I'm a communications major. Or I was a communications major. So I kind of always love seeing these old retro TVs like this. This is from the Benai Brif Lodge, El Paso. Yiddish songs, Mama Never Taught Me. Oh, it's from a comedian. The thing I love with Judaism is the sense of humor. I do. I mean, I have had a lot of Jewish friends who have this amazing sense of humor. So, yeah, love it. This is immigration. Iran, Cuba, Soviet Union, between 30 and 30, uh, 300,000 and half a million Soviet Jews have settled in the United States since the 70s. South Africa. Oops. Bukhara, which is you from Uzbekistan, and they now live in Israel. More than 100,000. 100, I actually went in there. And then. Civil rights era. So right now we are at 1970. 203 million population of the United States, 5.7 million Jewish population, 450,000 attended Woodstock. March for Women's Rights. I love this song that's playing right now. Paul Simon actually did a recording of this and it's so beautiful. Simon and Garfunkel, if you ever, if you ever want to find it on our iTunes. This is, um, the, they were, the disappearance of these three. I can hear a Bob Dylan song. The women's movement. A lot of people don't know this, but the Jewish people did have a lot in like the activism. Betty Friedan. We can no longer ignore that voice within women that says, I want something more than my husband and children and my home. Amen, lady. The Six Day War. This is um, the fight with the Soviets and Israel. You measure a democracy by freedom it gives to its distents, not the freedom it gives to the assimilated conformists. Abby Hoffman. I like that quote. Okay. Who were the Refnusiks? And the Refnusiks were Jews who lived in the Soviet Union but were not allowed by the government to live freely or leave the country. That sucks. Can you imagine living in a country where you can't live freely but you can't get out? This is all about getting the, getting the Soviet Jews out of the Soviet Union. The society in which Jews are most secure is itself only to, that, to the extent that citizens of all races and creeds enjoy full equality. The Jewish Committee Relations Council of Cincinnati, 1963. The, 
American mosaic. American mosaic, Jewish mosaic. Ooh, fiddler on the roof. That's a good one. This is, a lot of this is pop culture related because because look, Gilda. I love Gilda Radner. And then this is footage from, this is an episode of Seinfeld. Nothing, nothing at all. See? I was just merely expressing. Some coffee. Who was having? So we are at 1980. 266 million population in the United States. 5.7 million Jewish population. 220 million estimated numbers of viewers to watch the miniseries Holocaust first broadcast in 1978. Real men marry rabbis. Yeah, because that was there was like a whole thing in Judaism to get to get women to be rabbis. In fact, some branches of Judaism have that. I love these, these campaign buttons because, you know, I do stuff with PA Dems. So I love, 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 love that. Moment of silence for Theodore Ginsburg. Hanukkah Memorial, a menorah from the Statue of Liberty Centennial, which was, I think, 1986, if I'm not mistaken. And then you got albums by Jewish artists. Ooh, this is an ACT UP button, which, you know, LGBTQ movement. And now we're coming up to the end because the way this museum works is kind of neat. You start all the way up at the fourth floor, work your way down. Now, for those of you that don't know where the where this museum is, I will put a link in the bio, but I mean in the description, but it's Fifth and Market Streets in Philadelphia.